What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the beautiful Wednesday night. We are going to talk about the hip and impingement for this month, starting with March, okay? If you guys didn't see January's information, we went over the Achilles and Achilles tendonitis. We also covered in detail um, in February, the month kind of right after, going over kind of the knee and the meniscus in detail. So we're shifting gears to focus on the hip and impingement just because we're hearing from so many people having issues with the hips and having pinching and disc increased pain with deep squatting and things like that. So we are going to switch gears for that. So this is our number one video in our series of four for this month. So keep an eye on this number one. This is the foundation that's going to set the way for all the next three to come. Okay. So again, our topic for tonight is do you have hip impingement and what you need to know and how to kind of find out if you do. Okay. So stop immediately what you're doing, get a notepad out, take a pencil. You're going to write down some notes here, jot down some interesting things that might help you if you are dealing with this issue. Okay. Stop searching Google or WebMD because it's only going to leave you more confused. Stress is going to leave you with just increased severity of your hip symptoms because you're going to try different things and make it worse. You're going to scale forward, scale back, and you're going to get caught on that roller coaster of pain I like to refer to all the time. So, with that being said, we're going to talk about three topics in detail for tonight. Number one is the two types of hip impingement that you may be dealing with. Number two is how to figure out if you truly have hip impingement. And number three, what it means if you do test positive on the test we're going to go through tonight. Okay, so why are we talking about this? Why is hip impingement so prevalent in athletic population and CrossFit and average kind of gym goers? It's because people develop very, very tight hips because of all the sitting we do, right? We sit so frequently, we do the same movements in the gym, we squat, right? maybe we do leg press, we do very little internal rotation in our daily lives. And that's usually why our hips get really locked up and we lack internal rotation or that motion of adduction of bringing the leg inwards towards the other leg. So because of those reasons, we develop hip impingement and then it gets worse and worse. We tend to pinch different structures in that area, which we're gonna go through first, okay? So two types of hip impingement we're gonna talk about tonight is cam impingement being number one, and then pincer impingement is number two. So what's the difference between the two? Cam impingement just means that because you have a ball-shaped femoral head, right? So the end of the femur bone of the leg, that longest bone in your body, is a femoral head. It's like the golf ball, right? It's a golf ball on a tee. So it kind of looks like this. So picture this is your femoral head. Okay, and that femoral head is not shaped perfectly round all the time. So it could be like this, could be like this, could be kind of jagged edges. And because it's not round, it interferes with the femoral head kind of ability to kind of roll and glide smoothly across that hip joint. Okay, so it should roll and glide smoothly here in this hip joint. When you have cam impingement, it kind of juts into the sides and moves all around. It causes clicking, discomfort, pain issues. You get this little osteophytic, or we should say just ridges that form. And it just doesn't go well, guys. It's kind of like bone, kind of pushing on bone. And you have a labrum here that protects it. And a lot of times it cuts into that labrum. You can develop a labral tear if you don't kind of deal with and fix your cam impingement. Okay, so that's the first one. Right, that's cam. The next one's pincer impingement. It's very similar, but now in that acetabulum or that socket of your hip joint, now this is an issue with that for pincer. It includes excessive coverage of that femoral head in the socket. So where it should look like this, where the femoral head is kind of just lightly covered like this, with pincer, it covers the whole thing excessively like this. And that's an issue too, because then that femoral head has nowhere to go. It's kind of locked in position. You develop those same issues where you can actually develop labral tears and then need a labral reconstruction or you need to do kind of some joint work to kind of open up the joint and separate the two bones. Okay, so that is cam and pincer. I am gonna share my screen and show you guys a little bit more detail on that. And we're gonna go through how to figure out kind of, you know, if you have cam or pincer and what tests you wanna to do to kind of hone in on that. So let me share my screen and I'll show you guys kind of what I'm talking about here and just break things down for you a little bit more in detail. <clears throat> okay, cool. So you should be able to see my screen here. So going through cam and pincer first before we hit that fader test, right? So this is cam and this is pincer. So cam's here again, that femoral head is just jagged edged, right? It doesn't really fit properly in there, right? It should look like this. It's kind of caught here. There's some inflammation that forms in that kind of outer area there, right? So again, that head is not sitting kind of properly and it's not shaped around, okay? So that'll cause issues. The pincer is a little bit different where that acetabulum or the socket just covers way more of the head than it should be. So that head is really shoved up there too far where it should be kind of back and kind of outwards a little bit distracted, right? It should look more like this, but it's pushed too far into that socket, leaving no or little room for it to kind of move and glide smoothly. So both issues can end up with a labral tear and your labrum is right there on the top of that joint. And that's gonna cause extreme discomfort. And again, it can form little micro tears in that labrum and usually catching locking or pain with deep squatting will lead to that. Okay, so 
Number two is like how to figure out if we truly have one of these issues. Okay, so the first test and usually the most common test that most physical therapists, myself included, will do with people, and you can do this online, right? We do this, I have people do it themselves, so I'll have their friend kind of grab their leg and do it. It's called the FADER test. All stands for is flexion, adduction, internal rotation. Fancy medical terms for your legs kind of pulling up and out to the side towards your other legs. So say this person has a right hip impingement, if they do this test and I'm holding their leg and I push their knee kind of inwards, I apply as kind of a downwards force and then I pull their foot outwards at the same time, right? So knee goes in, foot goes out. If they have pain in the front of their hip or their outer hip, it's a positive test. And usually it means that it's pinching going on and it means that there's some impingement going on. So that means those bones are too pressed closely against each other and we have to work on distracting them a little bit. Okay, so that is the fader test in detail. That's something you want to address kind of right away. The other two things that come with that is pain with deep squatting and then pinching as well. And you can have pinching when you're just sitting and especially when you're leaning forward. If you lean to get up to kind of go from sitting to standing, a lot of times people will get pain with that, especially if you've been sitting for a long time. If you're sitting in a car, because a lot of times your knees are sometimes higher than your kind of hips in a car, especially if you're in a low set car, it's a couple of feet off the ground, like a not an SUV, but like a sedan, like a smaller kind of two-door car, right? If you're, if you're kind of driving in that position, you're almost like making your hip impingement a little bit worse, especially if your kind of foot is a little internally rotated or your legs are crossed at all. Because sometimes you want to avoid crossing your legs and it can lead to increased discomfort as well. So that is the second thing that we talk about, right? So fader test, um, just to recap, and then pain with deep squatting and then pinching as well when you're in those deep positions of sitting, leaning forward, or transitioning from kind of sitting to standing overall. Okay, so I wanna show you kind of here what the hip joint looks like. So again, this is a normal hip joint where that kind of femoral head is in that acetabulum, nice and neutral, it's just kind of sitting there. So these are the typical motions that are gonna be painful for you that I wanna go through here when you're doing a certain exercise or if you're just walking or it's part of daily life. It's called adduction. So when you're kind of crossing your legs, so when you're bringing that leg across the body, right, you're going to sometimes get some increased discomfort, pinching, or you're not going to have the kind of mobility to get there. And guys, there's a reason why, right? The, the kind of third thing that we talk about is you want to address, like, what, what do you do if you test positive for these things? Number one is you want to try and create more space between the femoral head and the acetabulum. So you want to stretch the ligaments because they connect bones to bones. So you, those ligaments get really taut, tight. So you want to do some joint mobilizations. So you can use a band to distract a little bit. And this is going to come up in our future videos. So pay attention to the next three videos coming up for this month of March, because we're going to cover how to exactly do these exercises and like briefly explain them tonight. But a band will help it kind of attach to the hip. You can use it to pull it out of the joint. You can have someone pull on your leg. That's going to help distract the hip joint to create more space there. That's the number one thing that helps hip impingement. Then you want to strengthen as well. Don't forget about strengthening because those muscles, right, connect to tendons, which connect to bones as well. And a lot of times those muscles sometimes are tight in the front, but most of the time they're weak in the back and the side of the hip. So you want to really strengthen the muscles here, being your glute med and your glute max in the back of the hip. And that will actually help pull your pelvis in a better position. Sometimes realign your femoral head too. Some of those muscles connect to the femoral head. Okay, so that's adduction. The other one, if we look here, is internal rotation. So turning those hips inwards with the position at the bottom of a squat, that can also be very painful because you're gonna be, where you should have this good space between your femoral head and the acetabulum, you don't. A lot of times it's pressed against it. So picture the rubbing inwards as you're kind of going into that internally rotated position. And guys, people who tend to kind of in-toe or pigeon-toed, they develop hip impingement a lot more, and it's a lot more prevalent in that population, usually gymnastics, than someone who's just normal with a different kind of hip joint setting. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys have kind of realized that's these are the exact two motions compared with the fader test, where you kind of internally rotate and you adduct the hip. Again, you can do this test yourself. You pull your hip in towards your chest and then pull it across your body towards your opposite armpit. If you have pain with that, most likely you have hip impingement, you're dealing with that, okay? So that is the quick breakdown of hip impingement overall. So again, just to recap, right? The two types of hip impingement are cam and pincer. 
right? How to figure out if you have it is you wanna do the fader test. You wanna keep an eye on if you have pain with deep squatting or if you have pain when you're changing positions or when you're sitting for a prolonged period of time, especially in a long car ride. And what it means if you do test positive is that you need to address it right away. You might wanna get an X-ray or an MRI. X-ray is probably gonna show you that there's some kind of impingement there because they're gonna see less space between your bones where it's a little bit closer together. And the other thing too is like, you wanna probably go see a physical therapist who's gonna help open up the joint space by doing joint mobilizations or look up banded joint mobilizations on YouTube or Google. You can look those up and do the same thing a therapist is gonna do for you that you're gonna pay a lot of money for at home on your own. Cause that band's gonna help distract the joint. You can go into stretches and then you strengthen after that. Always stretch, open up the joint first, strengthen second before you finish, okay? So awesome guys, hopefully you found that super useful. I wanted to keep this one super short, quick, to the point, succinct. This is the very first video again in our hip series for this month. Thank you guys so much for watching this last month where we covered the knee and the meniscus. We have gotten so much amazing feedback from that and the Achilles tendon from January. We should have done themes a lot sooner, but um, so I apologize, we started it kind of later on. If you found this valuable, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next three hip impingement videos to come so you learn how to treat it properly so it doesn't come back because it does frequently happen. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, link them below. Take care.